Tristan, we all know that from career coaches and everyone, they tell to job seekers, customize your resume to the job you're applying. Use those keywords, make sure that you have some qualitative numbers in your resume. So what tips you have as a resume writer for job seekers during these times? Yeah, so I think the first thing you need to do is really take the time to reflect on your experience. We don't reflect on our experience enough and really understanding exactly what we did, how it impacted the organization, and also, like you said, metrics and numbers that come with that. Um, then what I like to do is I like to actually review the job description line by line. I will literally go through and read each line of the job description. Now I'll stop and ask myself, what experience do I have that relates to this? Right. And that way I can really understand how my experience ties to the job that I'm applying to. Um, and that's also probably an example that you would like to highlight inside of your resume. Right. So so really understanding that can help you figure out how to tailor that resume a little bit better. Um, the other thing is utilize tools that are at your disposal. So there's a website called jobscan.io, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it actually allows you to upload or copy and paste your resume in. Um, you can also then copy and paste the job description in. And it does an analysis against your resume to, to basically identify the keywords that may be missing from your document. Right. So then you can take those keywords and you can figure out how to fit them into your resume organically. And that's really going to help you get past what's called the applicant tracking system, which is the system that's scanning for those keywords or phrases before your resume is ever seen by human eyes. I think that's very um, important for job seekers to do it. I agree. Yes, 100 percent, because otherwise you're going to get screened out. So if you've ever gotten um, those emails like you apply to a job and like, an hour to 24 hours later, you're getting a rejection email that seems pretty standard. That typically means you haven't made it past that applicant tracking system. And so we're really fighting against that. And websites like that jobscan.io website can absolutely help you identify those keywords to include. And why um, do you think, sorry for interrupting, why do you think the companies use that? tracking system. I just want yes. the speakers to understand the other end what happens. No, that's a really, really great question. And it goes back to uh, the question that you, or the question you posed earlier. You said that a lot of your friends who are recruiters, they'll post a job and they'll get hundreds of, <laughs> of applications, right? So uh, the research shows that the average job posting gets anywhere from about 150 to 250 applications. And when we think about recruiters, typically they're responsible for filling multiple roles, sometimes 10, 15, 20 different roles. If we're talking about 20 roles at 250 um, resumes per role, no one's reading 5,000 resumes. It's just not going to happen, right? So not for, not for <laughs> one recruiter. Yeah. So many companies and organizations have put in place this applicant tracking system to scan for those keywords or phrases. And it's essentially a preliminary um, system to, to weed out candidates. Um, so that's why it's really important for you to tailor that document so you can actually make it past that system and get in front of human eyes. Yeah. Um, and so the other thing that I think would be really beneficial when you're customizing your resume is to utilize any information that you gather in informational interviews. So if you're having conversations with professionals inside of the industry that you're trying to go into or the company that you're trying to get into, if you're asking the right questions during those informational interviews, you're often gathering things that you can utilize to tailor your resume, your cover letter, your LinkedIn, or even your interview responses. So I think it's really important that we start having those conversations because those people can give you a lot of insight that you may not immediately get from job descriptions. Yeah. And what about cover letters? Some companies require, some companies is an optional. Do you recommend to use cover letters or not? Or it all depends? <laughs> Yeah, my personal philosophy is this. If a company doesn't say it's required, then you don't have to submit it, right? Um, I personally believe that cover letters can actually be a differentiating factor for people who submit them. Um, as long as the cover letter is well written, meaning that you know your spelling and your grammar is on point, and that it's tailored to the company or organization, right? That it's in some way, shape, or form tying in their missions, their values, their initiatives to really showcase how you're, you can be interwoven into their 
their company culture and what they are currently doing. Um, but when we do that, we need to be mindful. Cover letters used to be one of the first things that were seen inside of the application mm -hmm. packet. Now they're really one of the last things that are reviewed if they're there, if they're even reviewed at all. Mm -hmm. But I have talked to recruiters who said that they've been trying to decide be between candidates and, and it, what it really came down to is one candidate provided a really well written cover letter and they decided to, to invite that person in for the interview over the other one, right? So I think if you can write a ta well tailored, well written cover letter, it can never really hurt you throughout the process. Um, but it's not required unless the company absolutely states it. And I believe that it should not be kind of a repetition of your resume. It should be more, what can you do to the company? Because I heard previous interviews were saying that job seekers are either a revenue generator or an expense. So you need to show them that you are a revenue generator to a company, not an expense. Absolutely. I completely agree. We don't want that to just be a repeat of your resume. Um, you know, you want to find an engaging way to start that, uh, to start that cover letter. And then, you, like I said, you want to tie it into the missions or the values of the organization. Mm -hmm. And then when I was going back, uh, going back to uh, my answer in the last question, you really want to highlight that difference that you have, right? What makes you different from everybody else doing this work or how you make a difference in the work that you're doing? And that's really going to let them understand what the potential return on investment in you as a candidate will be. Those are great tips, Tristan. Thank you very much. And again, for the audience watching or listening, if you have any other tips in terms of resume writing or cover letter, please leave comments below and tune in next time for another great question with Tristan. <laughs>